Hello guys, you're welcome back to Photographic Academy. All right, so today I have something very interesting for you. Look at, take a look at this. All right, so this is what we are looking at today. How we're able to create this image, convert it just from something flat and not looking too nice and all of that to something this beautiful. I'm going to give you a walkthrough step by step on how we created this. And the beautiful part of the whole stuff is that the background that we are using in this image, we are giving it out to you for free as well. All right, so this image was submitted by a very amazing photographer. His name is Vibesin501, Vibesin501, all his uh, social media handles. You just go and check Vibesin501. A very big shout out to the guy, very good at what he does. Okay, so he submitted this image to Photographic Academy, so we can use it and record a tutorial showing him how it, he can as well take his job or even this particular image to a next level using his own job. This is a program we started running not quite long now. We, we, we made it open to photographers, especially to our followers, to submit their images and see what we can make out of it. In turn, we send them the tutorial right here on YouTube so they can watch and see how they can take their job to the next level. The very most important part of it is that we are giving everybody that submits their image a very big shout out here so they can increase their fan base and their customer base. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's get straight into work. Remember, this is the image we are looking at. So this is what, the one we are using to create it. Now, the first thing we are going to do is, of course, crop our image. So I'm going to just crop it 4 by 5 just like this. Yeah, like that. Make sure that your content aware is turned on. Press OK. So allow Photoshop to do its thing. All right, so that's weekly done. I'm going to now use my market tool to, all right, rather my clone stamp or something to just take away this area. Very important. Yeah, we're done. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do quickly, of course, we used our done for you action. You guess that, right? So I'm just going to go straight to my done for you retouch action. I'll give it a play and keep it somewhere around one and enter. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's zoom and see what we'll have. Amazing. So one more thing I did while I used my done for you is that I just took out a little time, maybe like three or four minutes and do a quick request separation on the image, just like that using my beauty retouch panel, just a very quick request separation to make sure I have a very nice evened out skin to skin. So I just somewhere around four or three. It's going to give us something good to work with. It's not quite a high tilt shot. All right, so I'm going to pick up my mixer brush Stick to the settings you have on your screen and make sure to so deactivate this and quickly just paint over your skin or rather let's not deactivate it there are a lot of ways you can do this so i'm just going to make sure that sample or layers is unchecked and i'll quickly just do a, a very quick frequency separation on the image so i have a very interesting bonus for you in this video very interesting sorry i think we messed up we messed some stuff up there so we're going to run it again kept it around three press ok come back make sure you're on your low frequency yeah okay so let's go again nice it's working all right so just quickly go around your image the done for you have done so much for you but i think we need a lot of high detailed uh dimensions in this one so we'll take out our time and just do a quick one. You can take out your time and also do it quickly. If you want to learn exactly how frequency separation works, go straight to the description of the video. You will see a video linked to it where you will learn where we thought on the details of frequency separation so you can understand exactly what we are doing right now. All right, so I think we're cool. So this is before this is after. See one thing you can do with your image. You can actually just go straight to your low frequency, deactivate your high frequency, and go into your filter, go to your portraiture, your image nomi, portraiture 4, or whatever you are using, and just apply it on the skin tone only, on the low frequency without your high frequency. You're going to see how amazing it's going to bring out your job. So we already have the settings you can you can just move stuff around to see exactly what works for you. 
So we already have a setting here. So with that setting, I'll just press OK and allow it to apply on my image. Then I will activate my high frequency. Nice, that's done. So I'll just activate my high frequency. So you see an amazing effect that we'll have here. So let me see if I can actually assess it. All right, so this is this is the portraiture when added. This is it without the portraiture. This is it with the portraiture added. So when we reviewed our, our layer, we had a very beautiful image. This is before, this is after. That was a bonus. So one thing we're going to do one more is to apply our automatic dodging and burning just to make sure we have dimensions on the image. So we're looking for done for you right here, auto dodge and burn. So we click that, pick up our brush tool and just do a very big painting over the image, just like that. Just a very big painting, just like that. I think it's too much down here. So just reduce stops. Okay, so we have before, after, we we'll do stuff here. Nice, before, after, nice, beautiful. So we are done quickly, a very quick one. We are done with the uh, retouching and all of that. So let's get straight to work. Make sure you select your object, select object. Invert your selection. Make sure you duplicate your background by dragging this to the plus icon. Do not use Ctrl J. Right click and press linear via squat. Reload your selection by either right clicking on the image and go to load selection. Sorry, we should have done that immediately. We did. Okay, so let me take it a step backwards. Yeah, so go to layer here, cut. So you can stay on that layer, right click and say load selection. So it's going to reload it for you. I don't know why that was not working. Hold control, go to the icon, click on it. The selection comes back. Go to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur. I just blow it out till the background looks smooth. Press OK. Now, make sure your object layer is above and your background layer is below. Let's start with dragging our background just from this image over to that area. Yeah, so this is my background over here. This is my background over here. So I'm just going to drag that. Yeah, so I think I, I hope I'm not having her image stuck to the background. Let's check. We are done. Beautiful. All right. So I'll just move it around. Shoot exactly where I want it to be. So I want it to be here, right? Where was that? Yeah. Nice. Want it to be here, just somewhere around there. Do not move your object around, move the background. So I want it to be here. So one more thing I want us to do to bring things to life. Okay. So we are going to just be checking exactly the steps it took so that we can replicate it just the way we, we did it. So there's one important thing I want you to notice. We did not change the blend mode. We sticked to normal. If we change to, to blend mode, I didn't really try that. So it's not going to look that contrasty and high thing as it was looking. Look at them. So leave it just the way it is, especially if you are dealing with bright clothes, bright image, bright background. Okay. So the next thing I want us to do that, which we did here was that we made a selection of her dress. Let me turn that off. So we made a selection of her dress and brightened it up a little. So I'm, I'm going to do just the same thing over here. So I'll pick up my quick selection tool. I'll just make a rough selection of the dress. Yeah, just like that. Go to my curves and just brighten things up just towards the shadow area here. So just drag it from the down parts here like that. Beautiful. So you can as well, as well drag down the highlights down a little. So we'll have the dress brightened up a little. So the next thing we will also do is that we created some color gradings and some uh, adjustments over here. So I'm just going to group all of that into the same group so we can move it. And I will show you what each of them does for the image. So I'm going to open it here, drop it right over here. Don't worry, we'll get that to work. Okay, so this is the group. This is the group right here. We'll delete all the masks. So this one was targeted for the hair. You know what? I think this is messing up our workflow here. So let's just go and create them manually by ourselves. So this one was targeted just for the face. We needed some brightness for the face. So we'll just go and pull in some brightness into the face. Pick up your curves. Yeah, just brighten the face up a little. Pick up your brush. And just bring in light into the face. Do not make it too much. So to make it look like it's a high key lightning. We just drag that in. 
beautiful. So have it before after. This is too much, obviously. Drop it down. So the next thing we created here was a call for the hairband. We needed it a bit darker. So I'm just going to make a selection of the hairband using my quick selection tool. Just like that. Little bit of here as well. No, that didn't work. Beautiful. Make sure you did not add the earring or any part of the skin to it. Yeah, so pick up your curls, darken it down a little. Just like that. We're done. We're done. All right, so before, after. So let's check for the next one. What else did we do over here? So we had her skin tone color graded. We, vi we added some vibrance to the dress. I think the skin tone should be the last one. So I'm going to reselect her dress, reload the selection, and create a vibrance adjustment layer, and just increase the vibrance. Maybe a little bit of the saturation, just like that. Go back to the image, and the next thing we did was for the skin tone. So I'm going to copy the color, the hex code. I'll copy the hex code and come and apply it directly above her skin tone. Control V. Then hide it, duplicate the original image like we always do. Let's go to your coloring. Make a selection of the skin tone. I think I have a pretty good selection here. Press OK. Use the mask to replace the one of solid color. Then you can delete this. So we had our solid color kept at multiply because we needed a very dark skin tone. So I'm going to keep it at multiply, then reduce the opacity and paint into the pieces we do not have it in. I'm just going to use my brush and paint it in. Yeah, like that. So I think we're having a lot of spill on her hairband. Going to take it away as well. Just like that. Oh, well, good. So this is still too much. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. What else did we do? We kept it at 65, 45 hours in 55, 45. Let's just type in 45. Okay, so what else did we do with the image? We added detail sharpening to the image. I'm just going to drag this sharpening. Come over to this side and just paste it on my image. Just drop it here like that. So bring it down, should be below like this. Clip it to the image. Whoa, why is that happening? Okay, so you know what? I'm going to delete this. To avoid messing up with our work. I'm going to go to load up my actions, go to sharpen right here and play it. So when you play match the group together, So match group, very important. So when you match the group, you drag it down, drag it down. Cause we need to clip it to the image. We do not want it affecting our background at all. So we clip it to the image. So the sharpening only affects the image now. And we are good to go. That was basically how we are able to create all of this that you saw. And it was amazing. So let me just group everything together. So we can have a very nice, uh, okay. So let's hang on a little, I want to group all of this together. Yeah. Control G. So have just three groups, the color grading group and the retouching group. Forget about that. Okay. So have the retouching group, the color grading. This is quite messy. All right. So this is our final result. So one more thing I think we need to do is to add a little brightness to the skin tone. She's looking quite too dark. So I'm going to go straight to my highlight, to my curves and increase the brightness a little. Yeah, nice. So I think I have too much reds on her. I think I have too much reds on her. Let's check if we missed anything. All right, so I think I have a lot of reds on my image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my hue and saturation, select the reds, yeah, and darken it down just slightly. Nice. Okay. So the reds are gone. The reds are gone. One more thing we might need to do is to apply a global color grading and we are good to go. So I'm going to put my photo filter, of course, my cooling effect. Yeah. Nice. 
So we'll drop things down a little and we are good to go. So this was the image when we started. This was before, this is after, this didn't really show that. So let's take a snapshot and go here. So this is the image when we came into Photoshop. Look at how messy it's looking. This is the image after editing and we are good to go. Thank you very much for watching this amazing video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel on the notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. I remember it's still open for you to submit your images so we can retouch it live on YouTube here, give you your shout out and show you what you can do and the things you can create out of your own image and take it to the next level. So to submit your image, just go to the description in the video. You'll see a WhatsApp link where you need to click and you submit your images and we will take it off from there. Do make sure you drop your social media handles so that you will not lose your shout out. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next one.